The city of Cape Town says 10,000 hectares of land have been destroyed by fires in Helderberg in the Western Cape last week. The damage has been estimated to run into tens of millions. The city of Cape Town's mayoral committee member for safety and security, J.P. Smith, joins us now via Skype. J.P., very disturbing figures indeed. Just give us a sense of, of the type of area, or the, the kind of area that has been affected uh, by these fires in, in Helderberg. Well, the worst is actually news. It's not often that you can actually use the term breaking news, but this literally is breaking news. We've had a massive flare-up of the fire since the media briefing earlier today with um, the provincial minister and the provincial MEC, uh, and the situation has deteriorated. We now have the fire raging again on several flanks, uh, and storm strength wind just fanning these almost impossible to control blazes in really inaccessible areas, getting to new sections of farmland and new areas. So um, we're pushing all remaining resources back into the fire. And unfortunately, with wind like this, that means that your resources are, uh, your aerial firefighting resources are grounded. So the working on fire choppers and others simply can't get into the air. So, so what resources do you actually have on the ground right now? Well, over the last, uh, over the last week, uh, that the fire has been raging. We've had on average about 300 uh, firefighters uh, a day out there, um, not less than 240 at any given time, of which the city has pushed uh, almost all of that into the fire. So about, uh, on average, about um, uh, 200, 210 of those have been city resources. Um, and that has been really uh, challenging. Uh, the staff are exhausted now. It's a week of continuous firefighting. Uh, and uh, with the wind today, uh, this morning when we went out on the chopper to see where, how things were, there was only the fire right up at the top uh, and other small little uh, flare-ups that were easily contained. But with the smoke, with the wind as it is now, we've again reopened one or two flanks of the fire and uh, we're going to have to go back in there and try and prevent any further damages uh, from happening. We already have um, just short of 60 million rands worth of infrastructure damage in this fire and uh, probably about 10,000 hectares of, of vegetation and farmland affected. Are homes threatened by, by this latest flare-up, JP? Uh, no, no specific homes as such. Um, there was a case where at Nordic the fire got to about within 100 metres and we... JP, are you still on the line to us? We've lost you for a moment there. Sorry, the rest has been facilities very deep into the mountain all to get to. And high up on the flanks of the mountain, other side of Hansakop, which has been extremely inaccessible and difficult to reach. Uh, JP, you've spoken to us uh, about the cost of, of, of damage to, to this particular area. I mean, you, you're talking about roughly 60 million rands worth of damage. Can you give us an idea of what the operation you've mounted to fight these fires costs? Well, that's going to be somewhere between 12 and about 20 million at this stage. Uh, and it's uh, eaten a huge hole in our uh, aerial firefighting budget. So for the remainder of this financially until 30 June, those budgets are going to be reasonably strained because this is taking up a huge amount of the, the firefighting budget we have for that. We might have to put some more money towards that budget, uh, depending on what happens. Uh, mercifully, no loss of life to date. That's a big indicator for us. So yes, we've suffered property damage, but no loss of life and some very quick thinking and the tactical firefighting prevented us from losing um, Solaris Pass Village when the fire came through there, if it were not uh, for the intervention at high riding at that farm, we would have seen the fire cut through there into the informal settlement and into that area, which would have been absolutely devastating. Uh, JP, uh, by and large, are, are these fires started deliberately or are they, are they simply a, a fact of nature that, that occurs every year? No, look, every fire is started by man. There is very rare exceptions where the train tracks produce sparks around certain corners that they take or when the trains go through there there are um, there's occasionally a fire started by lightning but these are so rare as to be negligible in this context what we see are fires started by men uh, human beings start fires all fires are started by human beings and it is whether the fire is maliciously started or through negligence 
Um, now, the majority is negligence. Some of these fires, there's been reason to believe with the big fires we had in the South Peninsula last. There were incendiary devices found. There were witnesses who saw fires being started. There were containers of combustion fuel and other things found. And we have three witness statements relating to this fire now, indicating that there was some purposeful fire setting at places other than the original source of the fire, presumably in an attempt to open new flames. Whether those are credible or whether those are misinterpretations of somebody's conduct seen at distance uh, will have to be investigated. We've got a small investigative unit in the city that is working with SAPS to try and determine the validity of any of this. Um, the origin, the source of the fire at the plantation in Hrabo, um that is the, 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 the root of all of this. That will have to be determined. That is the, the fire, the start that led to this um, to, to, that led to this current disaster um, and that is driving up all these costs and potentially putting at risk much larger sections of land now. And how easy is it to apprehend and prosecute suspects in cases like this? Well, extreme difficult. A, because there's very little information. These things are done at odd hours of the night. Um, they're quick and easy to start. There's usually no witnesses. It's done in remote areas. Very difficult. We are trying to use such available CCTV footage and information. We've done again today to the media call for information of all members of the public to come forward to contact us at our call center 021-480-7700 to give us any information that they may have so that if there is a malicious fire setting component to this, we can deal with it. Uh, regardless of what the source of it is, we now have a large fire to contain with, and our exclusive focus at the moment is on that, making sure that we have no further loss of property or life, if we can at all avoid it, making sure that we protect vulnerable areas like our, um, like residential components, like the Solaris Pass Village. We've rescued as many animals as we can, um, horses, baboons, all manner of other wildlife that has been rescued in this process. We've made a monumental effort to keep um, everybody as safe as possible and to keep our own staff safe and to keep the aerial firefighters safe because they're being asked to work into in really impossible conditions. Last week we had to commend firefighters who were scampering up the side of the really dangerous mountain terrain to go and, and access the, the blaze at the top to try and put that out. So when the wind changes, that fire doesn't double back and head on back down into Grabo and otherwise. And at the moment, nature is just really not playing along and is making life extremely difficult for us. We, um, we really are pleading for Mother Nature just to, um, just to cool down for a few days so we can get on top of it. And let's hope you get some rain there. Thank you so much for speaking to us. The City of Cape Town's J.P. Smith uh, bringing us that latest update, some breaking news here. A massive flare-up has occurred on the slopes of that Helderberg area, uh, although those fires were put out a little bit earlier on today, appealing for information about any possible arson attacks there. Sport and weather.